What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Too Much Test Podcast, episode 45. We're going to answer some questions from all our awesome viewers. So this one should be a good one. Um, I'm Test Your Levels. You can find me on YouTube, Testosterone and Men's Health. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. And I'm here with my good friend, as always, Sam Stolt. What is going on, Sam? Hey, great to see you guys. Uh, great to see you. I'm enjoying the shows. You guys are here for the first time. What's up? My name is Sam. If you're here uh, for not the first time, it's good to see you again. Uh, let's get straight into these questions. I've been um, screenshotting these questions for a while um, for the show, and uh, we haven't been doing a show. So if you guys have these types of questions, leave them. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave them on the YouTube comment section. If you are doing this as a podcast, take a screenshot, tag us on Instagram. You can see our profiles up above, sam.stolt on Instagram or test your levels on Instagram. If you tag us there, we'll be able to see the question and save it to put it forward to do these because maybe we can turn this into a uh, regular thing. Where we yeah. these? So Pepe, I like that name, Pepe asks, what is the blood test called for before a SARM cycle? What is the most important thing to analyze from that? Uh, what do you, what do you, what would you do? What would like tests would you get done? If you're brand new to SARMs, uh, what, what blood work could you get done pre before you take SARMs? I mean, in just relation to SARMs, I mean, if we're not including testosterone in the mix, I mean, I would think most important would be a metabolic panel. So you can see your liver. Um, I mean, lipids, yeah, I mean, lipids is probably good to check out too. They can be, you know, they can fuck with your cholesterol as well. I mean, you're probably looking at the standard ones. I mean, free testosterone, total testosterone, SHBG, um, luteinizing hormone. I mean, if you're guys, this is the first time that you're taking any type of PADs. I mean, I hate to say it. I know a lot of guys that take SARMs are going to be younger, but I mean, I would run, you know, as comprehensive as you can afford just so you have a baseline so that when you look back two years and however many cycles you've done, because I know you're just going to do this one Austrian cycle and then you're going to do a PCT and you're going to come right back, but that's not really how it's going to happen. You're going to start with Austrian. Expand on that because that's a very accurate, true statement that we see from beginners all the time. So like, like dive into that a little bit deeper too, because I think that would be valuable as well. Mm -hmm. that, that this, once you go into this rabbit hole, it goes a lot deeper. Yeah. So if if you're planning your first cycle, just know that you're going to be planning your second one pretty shortly. And that's just the way it is. I don't know of anyone that I know of that's only done one. You know, typically, at least back, I mean, back in my day, oh, Jesus Christ, I just fucking said that. I'm 40 years old. Back in my day, you little fucking Gen X whippersnappers. We're old man now. <laughs> But I mean, back in back in the day, I mean, the SARMs didn't exist. So you had at the beginning, it was irregular steroids, your testosterone, your D-ball, your this and that. And well, I don't want to get too off topic, but you're going to start and you're going to say, all right, I'm just going to do this one cycle. You know, it's right before summer. I want to get a little bit extra muscle on there before that. And then it's bulking season. And now it's I want to do LGD for, you know, 4033. And yeah, I'm going to put on some bulk. Okay, well, I'm going to take a little break from that. Well, I'm looking pretty good. I'm looking pretty lean. Well, I want to try something a little bit similar to like what Trend would do. So I'm going to jump on some Rad 140. And I'm going to add some MK677 on top of that so that I get this healing and all this and so I can eat more. And then it, it snowballs, you know. And the guys that are trying their first cycle, they're typically interested. They like the lifestyle of bodybuilding. They want to look jacked and juicy. They want to get the ladies. And it's just a progression, you know. It's same idea. You have your first beer, then you smoke a joint, then maybe you do a little ass off a of stripper, a uh, cocaine off a of stripper's ass, and you know, and then it escalates from there. <laughs> but it, it is. It's it's almost like um, you know the slope in your floor. Sometimes if you have like an older house and you drop something that's round, and then like wherever it drops, it doesn't just stay there because the slope on the floor is like it rolls towards the lowest point in your floor, right? And if you think about this as, as like PEDs is like, you're kind of like starting the ball rolling and it's gonna roll 
And depending on how old your house is, and you can think about the houses maybe you're thinking on things or how deeply you go down the rabbit hole, um, the slope can get pretty steep. And you might go like off a cliff in terms of, you know, your health, but also in terms of like all the different things that you might want to do in the future. So just be cognizant of that. Is there a turning back? Is there a way, do you, do you feel like you could stop testosterone now? Oh, hell no. No, absolutely not. But I think more, more to answer your question is, could someone break the cycle of taking cycles? And I think, I think the problem is, is that at least, I mean, at least for me, it was when I was, you know, 18 through 25, I was all into this and I had a lot of extra time to do this and go to the gym all the time. Then you hit kind of 25 through 30, you're a lot more focused on your career. You know, a lot of guys will have steady girlfriends at this time or wives and kids. So you're not as worried about getting jacked. So kind of the cycle is, is from 18 to 25, if you're in this world, you know, you're not thinking about the future. You don't give a shit about that. So you basically fuck up your hormone profile for the rest of your life for those seven years. And then after that, you're more focused on career, family, stuff like that. You'll probably end up stop working out. I hope you don't. And I did. And I suggest that you don't. But you'll most likely let yourself go. Um, and then you'll end up on TRT. And then kind of you may get back into that cycle. I mean, that was kind of mine. I mean, I think I'm somewhat common in that. I don't know. Yeah, it sounded pretty much like mine. Like, 17, <laughs> 18 did my first cycle. Didn't do much else for 10 years other than just work out. Uh, and then, you know, started back on SARMs and then destroyed the little bit of testosterone that I did have. Um, and, and then we got on TRT maybe four years ago and, and that's where we are today. Okay. So, um, let's do another well, question. Let's go to the next question. Good. Um, so Pepe, get a full panel. If you yes, can't afford a full panel, you can't afford gear and you can't afford to start doing SARMs. Uh, this comes from group participant. What an interesting name, right? Um, I like it. <laughs> I'm taking 12.5 mg of injectable rad 140 uh, LGD 4033 and uh, YK 11 a day along with 300 mg of test C testosterone recipient a week. Should I be injecting the SARMs daily or only on workout days? What do you think? I am not very familiar with injectable SARMs or the half life of them. All I can say is that. When I took rad, I was taking it at 10 milligrams a day. This guy's pinning 12 and a half. And I mean, three different compounds. Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know, man. I mean, I understand the concept behind all of this. You know, you've got the rad for the vascularity and strength. You've got LGD for the, you know, bulk. You've got YK11 to, you know, inhibit that myostatin. But that's a lot of shit fucking kicking down your SHBG and jumping up your free test. But I don't know. Is, you probably know more about the 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 dose the dosage schedule for SARMs. Is having and I'm, I want to get into that. Is having a low SHBG a bad thing? Depends. It depends. If you don't get side effects from all that free testosterone, then I mean it can be a good thing in the concept of building muscle. You know, free test. That's the that's the mecca. But. I mean, with all that stuff, I would think, I mean, unless that person's pretty experienced, I mean, I'm going to guess he's going to break out like a motherfucker. Blood pressure is probably going to go up a little bit. I mean, his lipids are probably going to be fucked. Definitely check on hematocrit on that, depending on how long you're on it. I mean, that's a lot of compounds. I mean, at that point, I would probably do something a little bit more synergistic, something like 300 milligrams of tests with MK677. I mean, maybe I, I don't really like orals that much, but maybe something like DECA to kind of, you know, that's just a lot of compounds, man. Yeah. I like if you were like, how do I optimize the cycle? I would definitely drop one of the SARMs uh, or if you really want to take all the SARMs, I would uh, add in MK677 or CJC or something for HGH in here. But like, should you be injecting, uh, we, I don't think we gave a disclaimer, but you guys should definitely not listen to anything that we fucking talk about. <laughs> this is Buddy's bulldog. That's what he's talking about. This isn't a person. Yeah, yeah. This is for his dog. Uh, it's jackass dog. Um, and, uh, <laughs> we're not we're not doctors, nor do we pretend or claim to be doctors. This is just for entertainment and educational purposes. Okay, so how I might approach this is injecting daily or only on workout days. I personally would only inject on workout days. I would do this uh, maybe about an hour 
uh, 90 minutes pre-workout uh, optimally. Because if you look at some of the data on different SARMs, they don't talk about it, the injection form, but like a oral version of these, they, some of them, not all the studies will track, they'll, they'll show you like a little graph and it's like, okay, because uh, they're tracking this blood drop of like, I don't know what it's called, but they'll hook you up to something and they'll, and they'll check your blood like periodically every like 10 minutes or something for two hours or three hours. And what they're doing is checking like how quickly the compound you consumed gets to the peak levels in, in your blood, right? And so um, I don't remember which one of these was or a couple different ones, but it happens within the first like one to two, one to two and a half hours. So like if I was doing this, I would do this pre-workout somewhere between an hour to an hour and a half. So that way I'm getting this come up of these anabolics active in, in my blood on weekends. I would skip weekends. Uh, I've talked about it many times just because like, I care about my health a little bit, right? So I don't think it's necessary given my goals to take something like that on the weekends, right? Like I would just skip the weekends, right? Just yeah. try to let, let your body out. recover. Let your body yeah. recover. If you're doing 300 milligrams of tests, you've got plenty of, of stuff to get to recover. Let your liver take a break. Let your, kiver, your kidneys take a break. You know, let your androgen receptors clear out a little bit and then start on Monday and get your rest. Yeah, and then, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, what else you got question-wise? Or if you want to continue on, keep going. I was uh, just... no, this is good. So this one, why don't you just tell them to go watch the last show? Yeah, yeah. Go watch episode 44 for this one if you're interested in MK677. We talked a lot about it. We talked about my results. One thing I didn't mention about the MK67 is I've, I've rem I'm remembering more dreams. And I've heard other people talk about that. So I had a dream, it was last night that I was like racing cars with Cletus McFarland. If you don't know who that is, he's got a big YouTube channel with cars. He, he owns a he owns a racetrack in a, like uh, Deleon Springs or some shit. It's called the Freedom Factory and he does crazy stuff. He's got a bunch of thousand horsepower cars. But I had a dream, I was like racing with him. We were doing all kinds of cool shit. And I've just noticed that since I started taking MK67, I remember more of these vivid dreams. And just, you don't happen to have one of those treats, sleep tracker rings or things do you no i don't i don't yeah. want google looking at me while i sleep <laughs> i think aura is a company that has one or whatever but like yeah, as long as it wasn't yeah my 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 um my buddy got me a uh a thermostat for uh and him and his wife like have a dog and they like there's fucking we go over there for dinner every once in a while and they're like there's hair on the house and he's like i spent two fucking hours and and then they're talking about how like it would be nice to have one of those vacuum type things so i got him this vacuum anyways he gets me this uh google thermostat I was like, Fuck. Yeah. the nest <laughs> yeah but it's uh, cool but then you're like i don't you know what I mean? you're like kind of don't want that shit in my house at the same time from google <laughs> yeah like, uh, we can go all down that conspiracy theory uh or down that road you know, in another episode, Eric asks, he's running a cycle of S4 and Rain next week. I've ran Rad 140 before and made some pretty sick gains. Sick, bro. Has that that answers that's on you to answer. I, I don't, I don't, I'm scared of the ones that start with S. I saw about S23 and turning your vision yellow, and I was like, nope. For stuff like this, like SARMs that are not super researched, I stick with the popular ones. Like, I tried LGD a long time ago, um, and it gave me nausea. I've tried Rad 140 twice, and I still have a bottle of Austrian sitting in my drawer that I probably haven't taken. Probably not going to take for a while. So, so, so uh, you wouldn't or don't have any desire to take S. And basically, the end of the question was: Has anyone uh, ran S4 before? And what were your thoughts on it? Uh, so you wouldn't take S4. I don't know a lot about it. I haven't done a whole lot of research on it. I believe S23 was like designed as like a, like male uh, birth control. So it's like super suppressive. Um, and I don't know how related they are, but I, is S4, S4 is more of like a kind of like a dry, like hardening agent, if that's what, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah and so know. actually S, S4 was the, uh, S4 was the first uh, SARM I ever took. Um and that was the one that like i was too shy or too scared or too much of a bitch to tell my girlfriend at the time about so i like hid it 
Um, and then she found it with like the dropper. And like, if you don't like, if you're not used to having like a tincture, tincture which is <laughs> container, and then like having a like a plastic syringe next to it, um, <laughs> people might ask questions, right? Uh, so that, that was a whole uh, another conversation to have. But like, if you walked into my house and you see like a, 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 a like shadow box full of uh, syringes right under like a, a naked woman figurine, you may ask some questions. For anybody who's listening on the podcast, uh, TYL has a nice little setup behind him with one of those like boxes that you get from Ikea with like the nine different boxes in it. And one of those is full of syringes. It has a boatload of syringes on it on uh, above his one shoulder. Okay. Um, S4. I like S4. I, I actually have some of that in my cupboard. Um, the vision side effects only really notice them at like a, maybe 100 milligrams a day. So given like how I do things with, you know, the manipulating of the compounds on a weekly basis or daily basis, not taking things on weekends. Uh, sometimes I would like, and, 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 and I don't know if I told you this actually, but I haven't been taking anything other than testosterone and something for HGH for months now. Like it's been, it's been months. Like I was actually thinking about adding something back in. Cause I was like, okay, months I've been at 270 milligrams of testosterone. I haven't been taking anything else. And one of the things that I've always noticed with S4 ever since back then uh, was that I had a increase in strength. Like if you, if, if, if LGD 3303 wasn't involved, uh, I would say the thing that, and I don't live for strength, right? Like I don't, I, I much prefer bodybuilding type of, hypertrophy training and with s4 every single time i've used it i've known an increase in strength maybe that's there's something going on like because you're taking maybe say a typical dose might be 50 milligrams or 75 milligrams a day for a shorter period of time or like five days on two days off or four days on three days off or something so you don't get the side effects from it but like maybe there's something else going on that we don't understand where at 50 milligrams a day, you actually have a bigger increase in strength. Cause say like you might do LGT, say 10 or 20 milligrams a day, RAD 10 or 20 milligrams a day, maybe YK five to 20 milligrams a day, right? So, or S23, same thing. You, there are these dosage ranges that are like 10 to 20 milligrams where something like S4 it's very common to go with 50 to 75, even hundred milligrams a day, right? So maybe something else is going on where it's just because it's a higher dose, right? Like similar to uh, like Monjero versus like uh, uh, Ozempic or like semaglutide versus trisepatide. They're like, oh, trisepatide is better. Trisepatide is a GLP-1 and a GIP-1 agonist to help you lose body weight. But then you look at the dose and you're like, okay, well, you're just increasing the dose of milligrams somebody's taking or something. Yes, yeah, isn't it like uh, isn't Monjorno like ten milligrams? Where like semaglutide, like the max is like two. Yeah, or something like that. But yeah. try you take a much to higher dose, or like double the dose, or whatever the case is, versus like two milligrams. So maybe say it's like four milligrams per week. So you're like, yeah. So if I took two hundred milligrams of testosterone a week, or if I took four hundred milligrams of testosterone a week, like. <laughs> Right, it's gonna be more. Yeah, but that's crazy though. Like when I was I was sick last week, and like it's hard to look at because I know mil it's weird looking at milligrams because you know I took when I was sick I was taking like four grams of vitamin C a day, but then if I took two milligrams of Arimidex, I would feel like shit. You know what I'm saying? It's weird how like you know it's, it's crazy. What else yeah. did you clip? Did you clip all SARMs ones? Oh no, you got, let's got some uh, TRT. Got, some some. I've got some more. Um, this a lot of them are like SARMs related, but here's a peptide one from John. Ooh, I like peptides. Looking for a trusted peptide site. I'm uh, interested in getting TB and BPC. Should I take? Uh, we don't need to cover some of the other stuff, but like the bottom here, should I take both at the same time or one or the other? What are your thoughts on how somebody should dose TB um, and BPC? And then Chris at the bottom also asked another question. We should. Be we can get into after. Um, I mean, I would say, I mean, if you want maximum, I would probably do both BPC and TB 500. I mean, that's just what I've heard. I haven't looked into too much about the synergistic effects of both of them together, 
Um, my understanding is that TB500 is a little bit more like systemic, whereas BPC may be a little bit more like, you know, location based. If I had to choose one or the other, it would definitely be BPC157. That would be my choice all day. If I was going gung ho, I'd probably do both. How would you take them? Or, or you would do more research and then answer that question. Um, I mean, I, I, I'll speak about BPC 157. Um, for me personally, I'm not trying to pin 250 micrograms twice a day. I'm just not fucking doing that. So I loaded up with 500 uh, mil or micrograms and I did it. But also remember, the last time that I did TB 500 was on my bicep and I was injecting pretty on the top side of my bicep, but near the elbow. So that's a little sketchy in that spot. Like if it was shoulders, I could pin shoulders twice a day all day. That's not a problem. But when I was doing that, it was kind of sketch. So I'm like, all right, I'm one and done with this shit for the day. So, so would you do you? So like I'm doing actually both of those right now, and I and I pl I'm gonna plan on ideally I'd like to do this for the rest of the year. Um, I don't have like any gigantic. My knee still bothers me every like so often and stuff like that. But I want to see what a year of doing things like that to help restore will do for me. Um, I'm like every once in a while, I'll like do something in the gym and then I'll, my knee will hurt me again. Right. Um, and so I want to know instead of just like, OK, cool, let me take BPC because I fucked up my shit in my knee. How effective is this going to be? utilizing this as a very prolonged period of time. Same thing with HGH this year for like CJC and or MK677. So like the three of those I want to do all year. Uh, wow. And, and how I'm doing it, not saying it's the right thing to do or this is how anybody else should do this, but BPC I'm doing three, maybe four days a week, 500 micrograms per time. Because I don't think... Like anything, I don't think you necessarily need to do it every day. I don't have this aching pain in my knee that I need to solve immediately. It's yeah. like, let's raise the ability of Sam's body to regenerate any issues and heal any issues in his body, right? So I would say two to four times a week for the BPC. Uh, TB500, once a week, generally speaking, one milligram. And the... CJC one milligram per week. Plus, it's just easier to do things once per week than it is yeah. on a daily basis. Uh, and the MK six seven seven one to maybe three days a week, twenty milligrams uh, per day. And or, and I don't sometimes I might not do the CJC, and I might just do some MK six seven seven or vice versa on there. But um, I like that strategy for myself, and I'm super curious. Like, we'll keep updating you guys. Like, I started this in December. But then I traveled and did stuff like that. So I'm basically starting at the beginning of the year. And I'll keep you guys posted throughout the rest of the year. Let's get one more thing in here with um, this question from Chris. Best SARMs or peptide to grow muscle without acne? Stop being a pussy, Chris. <laughs> Just deal with the symptoms as they come. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I... I mean, I guess SARMs, but well, you're going to encounter acne. I mean, how old are so you? What would you do? Well, what would you, how would you approach this, right? If if he's like, if this dude's super timid and scared or whatever of, of acne and mm -hmm. he really wants to take a PED, um, like, would you answer a different question and be like, bro, just get on testosterone? Like, how would you approach this? It's tough. I mean, does he have cystic acne? I mean, is he looking at Accutane at some point? I mean, does he have bad acne as it is? It's tough. I mean, if you have bad acne, taking any type of PED that's going to, you know, raise testosterone levels, raise estrogen levels, I mean, you're most likely to encounter some more acne. I mean, I would think probably low dose arms would be the best way to go. Best bang for your buck. That's what I would think. I mean, From you can do like IGF-1, but... If you're asking this question, you're not probably ready to start pinning IGF-1 or, you know, whatever it is, DEX-3, whatever. Uh, I would, I, if I was like the, and by the question, it might, you might be able to say that this person is probably natty or doesn't know a lot about this stuff. Yeah. So I, I would say don't take any SARMs, even though that might be the best thing to build muscle in the short term. In the longer term, it's probably going to be more of a pain in the butt because then your testosterone is on the toilet, your lipids are probably fucked up, your liver could be fucked up. 
not that those two you couldn't probably fix, but the testosterone you may or may not be able to fix. Uh, and then you also go through a period of time. The testosterone is more tricky because the testosterone like fucks with your mood, fucks with your sex drive, where you don't notice if your liver's fucked up. Like your yeah. liver can be about to collapse and like go away and <laughs> you don't have jaundice, like you're good, you feel fine. Like, <laughs> but your testosterone, if that's in the toilet, like you don't, you, you have a lot of other issues. issues. Like you mentioned, uh, peptide, uh, IGF LR3, that's very powerful, or something for like HGH, right? I've never heard of once of that being you like having a negative impact or having like a acne effect, right? So you could do something like HGH, which is not going to affect your testosterone, not going to affect your lipids, not going to affect your liver. It's not going to probably put on as much muscle in the short term as a SARM would, but in my personal opinion, it's going to be far safer to do something like that. And I would agree do- with that. I would agree with that. I mean, well, to be honest, I mean, depending on how old someone is, I mean, I think you've got to put in three, four years of solid training, solid training. I talked to some guys and they're like, man, I'm just having a hard time putting muscle on TRT. You know, I'm going to the gym two, three times a week. And I'm like, bro, like you got to go to the gym four or five if you, before you start complaining about not being able to put on muscle. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, if you're going two, three times a week, yeah, I know you're hitting the gym hard. You're not hitting the gym that hard. I know that some people have busy schedules, but you know, wake up earlier. Go to sleep yeah. earlier. Uh, if you guys enjoy the show, let us know. Uh, leave us a review. Uh, Apple on Spotify on Google. Leave us a re- review. Screenshot that review. Tag me on Instagram. Tag test your levels, and I'll give you a free gift or something like that. You know, or t- he'll give you a free gift. Uh, right? <laughs> like, I haven't, dude, I haven't checked my comments or messages on Instagram in like two, three months. I'm just over Instagram. I fucking hate it. Okay, so don't tag. Don't tag. <laughs> I'm not going to see it. I've been but following my TikTok. YouTube and TikTok, but Instagram, fuck Facebook. They're garbage. Sorry. <laughs> no. We ended that a little negative. <laughs> I also started being big on um, TikTok again, too. So I uh, appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.